Main debate, the Honourable Member for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my good privilege to rise today to speak on Bill C-269, an act to amend the Fisheries Act prohibition depo deposit of raw sewage, tabled by my colleague, the Honourable Member for Regina, Capel. As the Fisheries Act currently stands, there is no definition of raw sewage. Bill C-269 would amend the Act by adding raw sewage to denote sewage that has not yet been processed or treated to separate and remove contaminants and includes used water from sanitary appliances that contains human fecal matter or human urine. Used water other than the type of water described in paragraph A from sanitary appliances or from other appliances in a kitchen or laundry and surface runoff and stormwater that is mixed with the type of water described in paragraph A. In section 34, the bill inserts a state statement that would not allow raw sewage to be eligible for an exemption permit from the minister. And Bill C-269 would amend section 36 of the Fisheries Act by adding no person shall deposit or permit the deposit of raw sewage in water frequented by fish. It also states uh, a non-application for Canadian fisheries uh, waters located in the Northwest Territories and Nunavut or north of the 54th parallel in Quebec or Newfoundland and Labrador. The bill would also indicate that dumping raw sewage in water frequented by fish is guilty of an offence and liable. The Act would come into force five years after the day on which it would receive royal assent. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-269 is a simple and straightforward bill. It calls for accountability and urgency of action. For me, personally, it triggers a vision for improved environmental protection and infrastructure. In 2015, when the member for Ottawa Centre was the Minister of Environment, she allowed the City of Montreal to dump 8 billion litres of raw sewage into the St. Lawrence River. So regardless of any justification, that is an unfathomable amount of toxic matter that was dumped into the water. I can't even imagine what the repercussions of that was. According to Environment Canada from 2013 to 2017, more than one trillion litres of untreated wastewater are known to have leaked or been purposely dumped across Canada. And the city of Victoria and surrounding municipalities has finally come to become one of the last major communities to stop dumping sewage into water in 2020. But according to Mark Matson, uh, president of nonprofit water protection organization Swim Drink Fish, Canada still has ongoing sewage pollution problems. Bill C-269 is necessary to protect our waters from contamination and wildlife species and water to be able to survive and thrive. It is time there is no more ambiguity on this. Being a member of Parliament for Port Moody, Coquitlam, and more in Belcara, I have the privilege of being an advocate and steward for many environmentally sensitive places within my riding. This privilege brings responsibility, and today I would like to highlight a very special and globally significant creek, which is Stony Creek, which some of the rivers in my riding feed into. Stony Creek is the environmental lifeline for countless wildlife as well as an urban oasis for both my riding and the neighboring riding, uh, Burnaby North Seymour and the greater region. Countless hours and decades of work by stream keepers from the Stony Creek Environmental Committee as well as local residents have resulted in the return of salmon to Stony Creek. Today, Stony Creek is the most successful Vancouver area urban creek for returning salmon. Stony Creek is the spawning grounds for chum and coho salmon, as well as steelhead and trout. It's also significant on a global basis as it is home to the endangered Nooksack Dace. Approximately 10,000 Nooksack Dace remain. It is very moving to watch the salmon on their spawning journey. I see their long upstream painful journey of perseverance ending in sacrifice for the next generation. It is very emotional to watch. I was shocked to learn, though, that after torrential rainfalls, sometimes raw sewage overflows from Coquitlam sewers and make their way to uh, the celebrated Stony Creek, where endangered Tinoxac days have made their home and the coho and chum salmon come to spawn. It is troubling for me that sewage overflow coming from my riding in Coquitlam is contaminating the aqua ecosystem in the riding of Burnaby North Seymour in Stony Creek. Upon discovery, I officially offered my assistance to the mayors of Coquitlam and Port Moody to seek federal infrastructure funding for their sewer systems when they seek upgrades. However, I'm perplexed as to why the member for Burnaby North Seymour, who is the Parliamentary Secretary for Fisheries and Oceans, who's been in, in office longer than I have, 
has not taken any action on this troublesome issue or championed funding for sewage infrastructure when the harm is being done to wildlife in his own riding and reports of sewage being dispensed into Stony Creek has been happening under his watch for years. According to obtained records since 2014, at least nine documented discharges of sewage have occurred in Stony Creek watershed. Raw sewage has spewed from manholes in my riding and flowed into the creek. And some experts believe that raw sewage is also escaping through exfiltration, exfiltrating from the Metro Vancouver Stony Creek trunk line and flowing into the groundwater and ultimately into Stony Creek. The Metro Vancouver Stony Creek trunk line was constructed in 1959. Over time, concrete piping and gasket will tend to deteriorate, increasing the likelihood of both infiltration of groundwater into the pipe and inflow from surface water entering collectively known as inflow and infiltration INI, as well as exfiltration of sewage into the groundwater and creek. Records obtained via freedom of information requests show uh, the following levels of E. coli in Stony Creek. Uh, and on September 18, 2020, 8664, so 8,664 colony forming units per 100 milliliters of water. Uh, in August, 7,701. 7, in October, 4,611. Samples exceeded 1,000 uh, colony uh, form units, forming units per 100 milliliters on six days. Ultimately, to solve the problem, new sewage infrastructure needs to be built. From obtained records, it is apparent that Metro Vancouver trunk line is over capacity, a very common phenomenon. Meanwhile, the catchments population is projected to increase 15,000 to 50,000. Constituents and other nearby residents are concerned that not expanding the sewage infrastructure promptly will result in increased contamination of Stony Creek as well as situations where new home purchasers are not able to move into their new homes due to lack of sewage capacity and similar uh, recently happened in another BC community of Campbell River. The topic of sewage is not a glamorous one, but waste elimination is a basic health and safety issue that needs to be dealt with as we have seen a microscopic virus like coronavirus has done much damage in our lives and to our establishments. Development of residential homes is a natural part of urban sprawl. Building more affordable housing is necessary to allow young families and first home buyers to break into the housing market and have a home but development without proper infrastructure is dangerous for the community and surrounding ecosystems. So Bill C-269 is a good place to start to trigger more accountability and action to upgrade all the infrastructures needed. Development is inevitable, but without the proper infrastructure, we could see a host of problems of which the impact can be the contamination of our waters and harm to endangered species and salmon. It requires a concerted effort among all tiers of government to solve this problem effectively of aging sewage infrastructure and innovating new systems to meet the demands created by growing development in urban and suburban centers like my riding and extreme weather events from climate change. If done with efficacy, a simple bill like BC 269 could instigate the unfolding of a larger vision to yield greater protection of vulnerable fish species and water habitats, improve public health and safety and job creation to help reopen our economy. This is a problem across our country and municipalities are aware of it, but they're stuck. They have so many things and other pressing matters they have to get to that without the funding, it gets shuffled under the pile. But with Bill C-269, accountability would be placed. And we can keep talking about the environment with trump trumpet blasts, but without deadlines and rules and a plan to accomplish these goals, it's still talk and no action. We know as humans, we all need a deadline and some rules to get anything done. I see this bill as one that has great potential to help us literally clean up our act. One thing I did discuss with uh, the member from Regina Capel was the five-year clause, the five-year term. And in discussing with him, it, it is something that is, should be debated and discussed with fulsome uh, conversation so that we are helping uh, the municipalities set themselves up for success and not failure. It should not be punitive. It should be something to help them get things done efficiently. So, Mr. Speaker, as I continue uh, and as I come to close, I feel that this is an issue that has been around for a long time and everyone's aware of it, but it's one of those things that nobody wants to tackle because the money's not, money's not there. But we know with uh, the Infrastructure Bank, uh, the minister 
uh, promised $35 billion, but how much of that was used for things like this? So moving forward, as we uh, discuss Bill 269, I hope that we can come to the table, bring our different ideas, and use this as a starting point to break that cycle of uh, all these in old aging infrastructures that aren't being dealt with so that we can protect the environment, that we can move forward with positive, prudent development that does not create other problems, and that the municipalities don't feel like they're alone, but that they have the support of other tiers of government. Thank you.